Ryan, Ryan Takaba's studio practice stems from his interest in sculpture, function, architecture, and design, and it often explores the themes of transformation and daily ritual. Born in Honolulu, he earned a fine arts degree from the University of Hawaii, and having lived on both coasts, but not in the Midwest, he said he decided to move to Ohio to pursue an MFA from Kent State University, and there he happened to meet his soon-to-be wife, Jennifer Dachuk, and partner of the project Dim and Sum, which is a collection of porcelain objects for the home. Give it up, give a warm San Antonio welcome for Ryan uh, Takata! Hi, good evening. Uh, it was great to hear Taj speak about his grandparents. Uh, I'm going to share a story about my grandparents and how it's influenced my work. Uh, one of my favorite memories as a child was my visit to my grandparents' house. Here, my brother and I had endless possibilities for a creative play and imagination. My grandparents spent their time cleaning the land and exposing the natural lava rock in hopes to create a landscape they thought was beautiful. It was here that my appreciation for landscape began. During the early 1900s, Hawaii's sugar plantation brought a mix of ethnic cultures from New England to Asia. These cultural influences are the foundation of Hawaii's built landscape. The image on the left is of a heiau, an ancient Hawaiian temple made of weathered lava rock, and on the right, a Japanese Shinto shrine crafted to allow the beauty of the material to speak. Native Hawaiians worship and pay homage to deities in the form of the sea, sky, and volcano. The same can be said of Shinto beliefs where unusual trees, rocks, and mountains are worshiped because it's here that energetic spirits emerge into the physical world. In these two beliefs, natural phenomena are linked to their definition of spirituality. As I was finishing up my graduate work in 2005, my grandfather passed away at the age of 83. Looking back, I found that his home and his way with his land nurtured the development of my aesthetic as an artist. The memories of this place have become an important source for my work. Every morning, my grandmother, who is now 90, visits my grandfather through daily prayer. This prayer includes the lighting of a candle, burning incense, and an arrangement of fresh flowers at an altar in her bedroom. With time and age, her commitment to my grandfather seems to strengthen, and it's something I've been witnessing every time I make a trip back home. My grandmother's garden is much smaller now, but she still is able to receive flowers to adorn the altar. In this piece, I begin to think about daily ritual in relation to a flower in a vase, the cutting, assembling, and the connecting of the flower to complete a composition, and the sorting of stem sizes to regulate its flow of water. Over time, water will slowly seep down the stem of the flower, often hanging on the stem until it's ready to slide into the next reservoir. Each piece has an interior structure to control the speed of water from one form to the next. When the last form has reached, the water slowly drips onto the petals of the flower, allowing for the stem to continue growing. From 2005 to 2008, I lived in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This is where whaling was one of the most profitable industries during the 19th century. The simplicity and elegance of the widow's walk imbues a mythical narrative. In this narrative, I imagine a woman performing in silence this daily walk up a flight of stairs to wait for the return of her captain. Much of my work engages themes of longing, waiting, and return. In this piece, the flower fits inside of the porcelain vessel. It is fed by dripping water on the head of the flower until a reflective form is created, allowing for the flower to be seen. Over time, the water will sleep down the stem and feed itself, however, constricting its growth at the same time. Here, the flower is arranged in an upside-down position, where most of the water will pass through the interior section of the form, but always leaving enough water to keep the flower alive, but not enough to neglect the flower for more than a day. When the water is, when, the, when ready, the water will drip into the second flower form, pre prevent the second flower from dying. My great-grandparents were the first to immigrate to Hawaii during the early 1900s, and they instilled their Buddhist beliefs and traditions onto their children. Their rituals have survived generations and are practiced by my extended family. Here we are making, as my wife calls it, mochi snowmen for good luck in the new year. But however, when a family member does pass, the family attends a wake, a burial service, and a ceremony 
to celebrate the 49th day after death. At the person's bedside were placed an arrangement of flowers, a candle, and the burning of incense. As the year passes, these objects are placed at an altar providing a place for visitation. In this project, I reference these objects to create an abstraction of the altar in the gallery. Each of these pieces will change throughout the course of 49 days. It is believed that the spirit wanders in the dark, moving to a new place every seven days, and on the 49th day, a service is held to mark the spirit's new resting place. The sublime power of the ocean and the vastness of the sea is something I think about when wondering about death, God, and the afterlife. Wake is made up of 49 porcelain objects that are filled with wax. This creates a candle in the form of a horizon line. A candle is lit every day, slowly melting the wax line to form a wake or wave pattern. The sublime is often discussed when speaking about beauty or fear that is beyond comprehension, measurement, or representation. During the 19th century, painters tried to depict the sublime landscape, a landscape they thought was so beautiful or terrifying that a painted image could not represent the true experience. Kaena Point on the island of Oahu is a favorite hiking spot of mine. At the point, you do feel like you're on the tip of an island looking out into the open ocean. In Hawaiian folklore, Kaena Point is the jumping off point for souls leaving this world. Drift is made up of seven porcelain, ob porcelain forms that when together form a cloud. Each week, one of the forms is moved away from the cloud to hold seven white mums. The vase reveals itself as the weeks progress as all of the flower's holes are hidden within the cloud when the cloud is intact, and like the clouds, the flower is in an ephemeral state, wilting and drying as it nears the seventh week. Haleakalao, the house of the sun, is a 10,000-foot dormant volcano on the island of Maui. Every morning as the sun rises, a park ranger welcomes the sun with a Hawaiian chant. As the sun approaches its ascent, it is soft enough for your eyes to stare at, but the intensity makes it seem like it's on fire. A light forms a ladder comprised of 49 incense sticks. Each day, one stick of incense is burned, forming a smoke pattern within the ladder. As the days progress, the pattern becomes rich in texture and color, with the smoke ascending while the ashes descend down the ladder. Eventually, these ashes scatter and accumulate on the gallery's floor. This project has been evolving and de developing over the last few years. I have now finished a series about the flower in the vase, and I'm working towards resolving the wax and the ash series. When complete, I plan to exhibit all of these works together for 49 days, with each piece attended to daily. The final installation will honor my grandmother's rituals and her devotion to her altar. Thank you. Uh, that is fascinating. Uh, first of all, how did you figure out all of the mechanics and the science of the water and the flowing through the mums and the thing and the deal with the stuff. Oh yeah, well, a lot of <laughs> it words. was just, well actually one, one day I was in North Carolina at a workshop and I, it was up in the mountains so it was really humid and I stumbled upon dew on, on a spider's web. And from there I just, I just, I, I enjoyed the way the, the water appeared, it just happened to appear. So I was trying to get that into a form, but it took several years before that kind of came back into the work. And, and then it was just a lot of trial and error as the, I, I refined the idea. And uh, you also, you were born in Hawaii, lived on both coasts, New Bedford, Mass, went to Ohio for God knows what reason. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> how did that work, and then how did you wind up here? Uh, well, I, um, I went to Ohio, and I met my wife, and I guess that's why I was meant to go oh, to Ohio. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> And uh, then we, we had colleagues that uh, we were working with and knew of the Southwest School of Art, and I applied for a job that was open in the ceramics department, and that's, how, that's what brought us here. And now you say you talked about where you're going to plan to uh, show this. Where can we uh, see your stuff right now? Uh, well, the last work that you saw was at the Southwest School. It was uh, in a show about porcelain. Uh, that show has now come down, and I'm, I'm just going back into the studio and... Yeah, kind of in a low period for, for gallery work right now, but it's just going back into figuring out the next body. And the dim and sum is just the, is what you call that? What is, or uh, am I just, I mean, it, is that a, an actual word? Because it says a, a collection of porcelain. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
well, dim sum, you know, like uh, I mean, I know that Chinese dim sum. So small plates that you enjoy. So we make my wife and I. Uh, I guess I'm I'm dim and she's some, and um, <laughs> we make small objects that we sell on online and through our website. All right, well, give him a hand. Wait, and you got to say the website now. Oh, uh, well, RyanTakaba.com is my own work, and Dim and Sum. Uh, you can get linked through that. Dim and Sum is through Etsy. Okay, give him a hand now, Ryan Takaba. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>